Hello, my name is Adrian David Chiok, and this is the uh, iUniversity blog. And uh, we have our first uh, guest speaker to our blog, uh, Mr. William Yeager, and uh, he's an extremely famous computer scientist, probably one of the most famous computer scientists of all time. Mm. And we're a <laughs> great pleasure to uh, speak with uh, William today. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, William, for doing this uh, interview. And uh, first, I'd like to go back in time and uh, just ask about where where were you born and where did you grow up? Grow up when you were okay. a child. I was born in San Francisco, nineteen forty, uh, June sixteenth, and it was at five eighteen p.m. How was oh. that? Okay, yes, good. <laughs> and what about your growing growing up? Your as a child? And, uh, yeah. Well, as a child, I. Until I was two or three, I lived in San Francisco. Then I moved to San Diego. And I was living in San Diego up through 14. And mm -hmm. then when I was a freshman, essentially I was a, I was a, in junior high there because I went through the ninth grade. Yes. But then I came to South San Francisco High School. Yes. And I started, I, I finished high school there. And uh, as a child, I was a surfer. I yeah. learned to surf when I was five. Wow. And uh, continue to do that kind of surfing. It was body surfing until I was 14. Wow. I miss it very much, actually, when I moved to uh, the freezing cold weather <laughs> from San Diego. I was in yeah. San Diego, right? Yeah, yeah. Mission Beach, beautiful place. Wow. Yeah. To uh, South San Francisco, which yeah. is known for its wind and fog. Okay, okay. I always claim it stunted my growth. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped growing. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, at school, what was your favorite uh, subjects when you were in school? Well, hmm. it's hard to say, I mean, because in, in, in grammar school, we all did the same thing. Yes. Right? Although I had a real affection for numbers. Yes. I don't know why or where it came from, but when I was uh, six years old, one day I decided I was going to count to a million. Oh. Now, I don't know where the numbers came from. Yes. But I went up, I lived in Mission Beach, and Mission yes. Beach has a seawall. So I went up and I sat on the seawall looking at the ocean, and yes. I started counting. Yes. And I got to a thousand, and I said, this is going to take me forever. <laughs> yeah. So then I went up by thousands, so I got to 10,000, I said, this is going to take me forever. So, but then I went up to, you know, 100,000, body, yes. body, 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 Yeah. I have no idea where they came from. They were just there. And I could count. And I liked numbers. And of course, I was very good at arithmetic and yeah. all those things, yeah. etc. cetera. And, uh, but I also had a very strong aspiration to be an architect. Okay. And so when I was five, I was balancing between a, an architect and a scientist. Why I made these decisions, I don't know again. <laughs> yeah. Whether these are things that I just like. And in high school... Well, junior high was junior high. I did very well in all my classes, but and actually, I was so good in English, I got recruited to play in the high school orchestra. Oh, really? In the junior high orchestra. Wow! So I played the drums because I, <laughs> that's all I could play. Yeah. Wow. That's great. And uh, high school it was a very interesting story. So I go into the ninth grade. I'm in the, I'm in the ninth grade in junior high and yeah. Pacific Beach Junior High School. Okay, yes. In San Diego. In San Diego. Yeah. And I had an English teacher, Mrs. Shepherd. Yes. And she was very, very tough. And there were 238 rules of grammar we had to know. And I knew them all. Yes. Oh, I don't really? know why, but I, I learned them and I was very good. So yeah. then I go into, I show up to my first class, 9 a.m. And it's freshman English and they're having a grammar test. Okay. And they ask, well, they say, well, Billy, uh, you don't have to take the test if you don't want to. It's on grammar. And I yes. said, oh, I'd love to. Okay. <laughs> and all the students really looked at me like I was somebody very strange. <laughs> and of course, I got 100%. Yeah. And everybody hated me for a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I was also a very good athlete. Yes. I played football, yes. basketball, ran track. Right. And in the summer, I played summer in baseball. Okay. And I got letters and all of these things in yes. high school. But yes. I wasn't like Olympic style. Yeah. Yeah. But I was very, very good. I even yeah. did it as a freshman year at the university. And then yes. I decided uh, I'd like to go off into academic. Oh, great, yeah. But I like math all right. And yeah. in in in, uh, in high school, math was all right, but it wasn't... Uh, it was, you could do it. It was easy to do, yeah. but it wasn't very... It didn't grab me. Right, right. And uh, I really didn't realize how good my memory was until when I was a junior, they had a 
contest on Abraham Lincoln. Yes. And I knew nothing about Abraham Lincoln except yes. that he was a president. Yes. And the, and the history, history teacher said, Billy, you're going to go do this. And I yes. said, okay. And he gave me a book and I read it. Yes. And I knew it all. Yes. I didn't win. I came in second. I had a very hard question. Yeah. When did Abraham Lincoln see his first slave? And it yes. wasn't in any of the books that I had. I could have right. produced it, but I didn't. Yes. And then I got second, and the girl who won, and yeah. I was very angry at him at that age, <laughs> asked some simple question I yeah. could have answered off the top of my head. But yeah. I, I didn't realize I could just memorize a book like that. Yeah, right. Wow. And that, and that was very, very handy as I went on and did math mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah, and yeah. Very wow. strong memory. Yes, yeah. right. And uh, when I got to Cal, well, first I actually, my first... I didn't go to UC. I, I was at when I was at uh, at South San Francisco High. Yes. I never really thought about much about university. I just thought, yeah. well, I'll go somewhere. Yes. And the librarian, Mrs. Clifford. Yes. One day, grabbed me. Yes. She says, "Billy, we're going over to UC Berkeley, and that's where you're going." Oh wow! <laughs> so you up and, and I took and you know, I had top grades. I, yeah. I was number two in a class or wow. whatever. And I wasn't the world's greatest student, by the way. Yeah. But I just did well. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Yeah. I had all these sports, you know. Yeah. Right. And so, and I got admitted. Yeah. But then my father, when I also took some exams to go to a federal military academy. Yes. And I scored quite well, so I went to the United States Merchant Marine Academy for one year. Okay. And I was number one there. Wow. You know, which also made me, people hated me. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, I said, it's not my fault. Yeah. <laughs> Come yeah. on, I'm not going to, you know. <laughs> exactly. So I did become a tutor and, uh, so finally, so the second year spent at sea, and yeah. I would, that's where I got this book that yes. Adrian has, uh, that, yes. <laughs> and he will show you later. And it was it was a calculus book, and I was I was on a boat uh, going. It was a ship actually, the Golden Bear, yes. American President Line ship, big beautiful freighter, yeah. something like five hundred sixty five feet long, gorgeous ship, and we were going through the Philippines. And I was talking to the third mate, yeah. and I was there, the cadet, the the junior junior yes. mate, and he says, you know. I'm I'm going through these Philippines and I know every single rock. Yes. And he's and, he, and I had found the calculus book and told him about it. He says, if yes. you don't do something, you're just going to be a guy out here who knows calculus and knows every rock. Yes. Yeah. And I started thinking about this, and so when we got back to San Francisco, yeah, we actually went to a place called Selby. I got off the ship, and I just resigned. Oh. And I decided I was going to go to UC Berkeley because wow. I really did get turned on to calculus. I yeah. thought it was really yeah. fun. And I said, geez, there's so much I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And there's so many things and so many. I've been around the world now. Yeah. I've been to many, many places. And I said, right. there's so many wonderful people to yes. meet. And I'm sure I'll meet a lot more of them when yeah. I'm at the university, et yeah, cetera, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. And so off I went Yeah. and did my thing. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Sorry, one thing. Just pause, pause, pause. Uh, so, Bill, this is... Uh, the book that you were reading on the ship, what, yes, yes. What, what, which uh, uh, I can see is from the library on, on the ship. Yes, yes. Um, and it was um, published in 1896. 1896, yeah. So this is a book. And the, and the person who had it went to UC Berkeley. <laughs> oh, really? If you look in there, you will see his name. Oh, okay. Edwards, yeah. Yeah. And it's called Differential Calculus for Beginners. So yeah. can you tell us what, what attracted you? In this book. Well, it was, I just say that it was interesting, but as I started to read it and I learned about derivatives, I could see that it had a lot to do with how things changed and you could calculate all kinds of fun things, you know, spinning things and things getting in maximum sizes, bacterial growth, and it just looked magic to me. And so I thought, you know, they had limits in there. I never heard of a limit before in my life, but I liked the idea, you know, you can get as close as you want, it gets, it's called a limit, etc. I was very naive about it, but it's just the ideas really grabbed me. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, you know, this is going to be fun and I'll go take calculus and whatever else it goes. I didn't realize I'd go on and do doctorate studies because yeah. I had no idea what that even meant at the time. But So you, so you, you took this book from the... Yeah. Sheep. Well, I, I asked them if I could have it. And they said, yeah. sure, no one else is ever going to read it. <laughs> they so, had no idea how that even got there. So was it easy to leave the ship? Was it because you were was part of the, the Navy, right? It was well, no, 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 this was a merchant ship. Okay, okay, okay. This so, was a, so you could leave any time. C5 yeah. of freighter. Yes. And uh, we went, the first trip I took, I went from essentially to uh, Pago Pago Samoa. Yeah. And I went to Australia and wow. I went to many cities, you know, Melbourne, Sydney, Point Kembla, Wollongong, uh, 
uh, Brisbane, yeah. etc. I went to Tasmania, yeah. uh, Hobart. We all, we loaded iron ore there to bring back here, etc. We we took what we our primary uh, cargo going there was lumber. Okay. Because there aren't a lot of trees in Australia. Yes. yes. And so yes. I got on the ship in San Francisco. We went to Oregon. We went to Vancouver. Loaded up the whole entire decks with lumber and then headed off to Australia. All right. So after you read this book and you felt you really love calculus, then what did you do? You went you, you went you quit and you went to Berkeley. I went to UC Berkeley yeah. and I took. And what's interesting, of course, is that the United States Mercury Academy, we had, we took double loads. So it was like semesters, yes. so that's quarters, cause, but we, the average load would be 15 units. We took 30. Right, I see. 15 for, you had to learn all about ships mm -hmm. and 15 regular academically. Mm -hmm. And when I went to Berkeley, they all transferred. I mean, it was a very reputable oh, school. Oh, okay, because. good, yeah. And so I had, I went there with an extra 30 units, which was nice mm -hmm. because I could take more or less classes. Yes. I, I, I like sports. I hate to yes. say so I might've taken 12 instead of 15, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. And uh, so I could also just do some athletics, even if it was intramural or whatever. But as yeah. I got into it, really, I just, they were there. Yeah. I didn't, it didn't really, it, it gave me the advantage that I could skip an English class. I okay. could skip an economics class. I could yes. skip a chemistry class and yes. take a more advanced one. Yes. And so I used them in that way. And, and I could take more interesting courses. And uh, uh, why didn't you, you know, you said your teacher said go to Berkeley in the first place. Why didn't you go that time? Why did you join the... Oh, mostly, uh, my, fa mostly my father's uh, influence because he was in the Navy and he okay. all that stuff. But okay. I, I mean, what they do to you in these academies, yes. they have plea beats and you have to go down and they scream at you and you have to memorize everything. But yeah. there, there was a reason behind this. They didn't want you to break up on a ship. Right, okay. And so it was a form of torture. Right, right. And I just sort of internally looked at these people and inside I was laughing like crazy. These guys are really nuts, you know, yeah. but I can do this. Right. But one guy who was from uh, South America, I think it was yeah. from Argentina, Rosser. Yes. He went crazy. He had to leave. I mean, oh, really? literally, he broke up. He couldn't deal deal with it. So, so it was it was training people to be working on ships, is it? To work on a ship yeah. and know that you could take these long days at sea. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because they yeah. can be monotonous. Yes. Unless you entertain yourself okay. in some way. Okay. And there yeah. are ways to be entertained right, yourself. Right. You know? Yeah. And. Uh, Although I remember when I was on the ship and I'd always go out and lay in the sun, they said, well, you, you think you're going to Hawaii? <laughs> I said, well, I, you know, I grew up in San Diego. I like to get down. But yeah. We did that. We did celestial navigation. I spent yeah. all of the, all the watches. I got. I knew the ships back like the back of my hand. Yes. Because you had to learn all of that stuff. Yes. Rules of the road, the safety. Yes. And we were actually out in the South Seas, and it's beautiful out there. Right. And I learned about the the, the horse latitudes of where there's no wind. Okay. And the ocean out there is it's right around the equator. It's just like a mirror. Right. It's not yeah. a ripple. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And they're called the horse latitudes yeah. because they actually threw horses off ships. Wow. As you okay. know. Uh, because they could, you know, they had to row these. Things. Yeah. And then I was up there one morning, starting a four to eight watch, which is a navigational yeah. watch. And I, something came up that looked smaller than the sun, yes. but about the size of the moon, and it was Venus. Yes. And I'd never seen anything like that. Yes. Wow. And then we were also going along, and yes. there's a, something that looks like a cyclone, but it's yes. called a water spout. Yes. And I was I was standing the. <laughs> The 8 to 11 watch, no, the yeah. 11 to midnight watch, okay. the 8 to 11, yeah, eight, yes. 8 to 12 watch, 8, 8 to 12, 12 watch, yeah. and I told the guy who was with me, which was the, the third mate, I said, look, there's a water spot out there, he says, oh, don't yeah. worry about it, Yes. he went right into it, all oh, right, yeah, <laughs> and you know, I mean, we had plenty of warning, and yes. I was out on what's called a flying bridge, which is besides yeah. the navigational bridge, yeah. and it came by, and I actually had yeah. to hold on to a compass, yes, this big thing called, to hold myself, to get myself from suck, being wow. sucked out there, oh my goodness, yeah, and it hit the ship, Went right across the the folks at the front of the ship. It's like we told the guy, "Hey, hi." Here's <laughs> a place you can. Let, there's someone who stands watch right on the front. Yes, yes. And there's a you can hatch yourself in. He yeah. did that, and wow. nothing happened. But it was an interesting experience. <laughs> that's all. Uh, just for the audience, what, what was the name of the the merchant ship school? Well, yeah. they, well, the first one was called the. It was a Maxim Line USS Sonoma. Yeah. So I went down to. Uh, Australia. It yeah. no longer exists. I've tried to find it on the web. You can yeah. find out a little bit about uh -huh. it. And then the next one was the USS Golden Bear, okay. which was like the you know the big queen or ship for the right. uh, American President wow. Alliance. It was really huge wow. and beautiful. They had formal captain yeah. dinners and wow. all kinds of good things. And what was the name of the school that you 
What United, was the name of the school? The United States Merchant Marine Academy. Oh, wow. Cape so it's, Point. It, it, is it a government like. Yes, yes. So you have Annapolis, West Point, Air, yeah. Point, Air Force oh, Academy, okay, the United see. States Merchant Marine Academy. Yeah, yeah, it's at yeah. Kings Point, Long Island. It's wow. still there. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Long yeah. Island, yeah. Okay, one second. Go. That's probably how you're kind of amazing, man. <laughs> She's great. She's great. She can be a Hollywood. Director. No, she could get a job as one of these statues of people who earn money by standing <laughs> yeah, out in yeah, the yeah, squares. <laughs> yeah, she's great. Okay, so uh, thank you both. Uh, and can we talk about now what your 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 studies in Berkeley? Uh, what did you do? Yeah. Well, like everybody else, I took a full class load because you're in you know you your 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 degree is in liberal arts yes. with a mathematics major. Yes. And so, in your first two years, you take well, one math class each semester. Yes. Uh, calculus, advanced calculus, differential equations, uh, abstract algebra, uh, diff linear algebra, complex variables, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. foundations, all kinds of good things. And, yes. and you're really blessed. Oh, analysis. So yes. you take real analysis, Lebesgue integration, math 105, math 105B, 105B, A, B, you take you carry six units of of math per semester going through your upper division. Yes, and uh, it's very you know and I really like the stuff. I yes. enjoy it, and it's interesting. I was a good mathematician. Yes, but there's something called mathematical maturity, mm -hmm. and suddenly you see it, mm -hmm. and, I, and it happens. And what happened to me was between my junior and senior year. I really liked the abstract algebra book by Burkhoff and McLean. Yes. So I, I decided well, I was just going to study it over the summer. Mm. I worked as, I had a job working for Southern Pacific Railroad because my aunt and uncle worked there and I'd do that yes. during the day. Yes. And it happened. I was just reading this book and all of a sudden something happened to my brain. Oh, really? And I began to see mathematics in yes. a way I'd never had seen it before. Yes. And I could begin to think about it in a much bigger way. And wow. I did. It's called mathematical maturity. So it happens yeah. to you sometimes. Yes. My, my best friends at Berkeley, some of them had it when they were seven. Oh, right. Oh, my goodness. In 11, there was a guy there, George Berkman, who came to Berkeley when he was 14. He was recruited. He was at Studio, Studio Basin or some high school in New York. Yes. And then he came there for the summer at 14. And uh, they recruited him. He started. And he was hyper genius. Mm. The guy is George, you know, if you can't figure it out, let George do it. <laughs> he was an interesting guy because he yeah. took, it's 15 units a semester, he took 30. Wow, double, yeah. And I one day I was walking, I knew George, and I was walking yeah. along, I said, he was running like crazy. I said, where are you going, George? He says, well, I'm late for my folk dance class. Because <laughs> he took Russian, yes. folk dance, opera. Yes. He's a, a big mind. Yeah. And once he was sitting in the library and I had a question about something I don't remember, it had to do with analysis or something. And I asked yeah. him, and he says, Oh, yeah, that's right. You just do this. You know, very thoughtful guy. Yeah, yeah. And he's, he's been a when he Finally, when he graduated from there, he stayed the whole time. Right. He went to Harvard. And his, the story is, is finally, he says, Well, I'm done. He, he took what he was working on, wrapped it up. That was his thesis. And he came yeah. back and he's been to UC Berkeley ever since. Oh, really? Wow, well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's still there. So you decided to do, uh, after you undergraduate, you decided to do a PhD. So uh, can you tell us about that? Well, it's kind of, there, there's a trans, you know, you go through a transformation here. Yeah. So by the end of my senior year, I said, okay, well, I got all this done. But I never really thought about what I might want to do next. It's yes. kind of like, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, what about maybe? And so I was in the summer and I said, well, it's too late to apply anywhere in my, my, uh, Roommate at the time says, well, you can go down to this California State University at San Jose or San Jose State. You can go down there. So I yeah. took it and I went to there and I got my master's degree in math. Yes. And this was, I mean, I just saw it. I yes. looked through that school, you know, took my orals. Yes. I had well, an oral, I had to write a thesis. I took yeah. an oral on my thesis. I had yes. to take some qualifying exams. And it was just done. Yes. So when I was done there, uh, I had met Joan. We were going to, we got married. Yes. And the first job I got actually was working in, for, was doing computing. Sorry, was she studying maths as well? No, 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 no. In fact, I helped her through her math classes because she took <laughs> math, but yeah. math for not people who become mathematicians. Yes. You learn about tossing out nines and all yeah. these crazy things that you never use for the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah, Egyptians yeah. added, you know, I mean, yeah. 
Okay. Don't ask me why they do these things. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> somebody knows how to teach it. I yeah, think. yeah. But she's quite right. Yeah. Yes. And I can tell you a story about her actually. That when we, I, I was teaching at a university in San Diego called Cal Western University. Yes. And uh, she was going to San Diego State. Yes. And taking history. Yes. And they gave her an exam where they would just give a few lines spoken by somebody famous. Yes. And you'd have to identify that person. Yes. And she scored higher than anyone ever in the history of the class. She wow. has that kind of mind that recognizes okay. voice and ideas, yes. et cetera. And yes. I was blown away. So wow. No way I could do this. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so anyway, so I go to uh, get my master's degree. Yes. And then actually while I was getting my master's degree, yes. I had a job at United Technology Center. Oh. For the summer, I'd never seen a computer in my life. Yes. And they had a very advanced Burroughs 5500 computer. Okay. And the language was very advanced. It's yes. called Extended Algo 60. Right. And I got a job. You're going to write some software. I said, what's the problem? You're going to solve how solid fuel initializes in a booster rocket. Okay. I've ta we've talked to you about this. Yes. Right? And yes. It, you know, it takes some calculus and all right. that stuff, body, body, ball. And I yes. did that. It was fun. And yes. I learned, but the first, it was very important mm -hmm. to learn how the hardware worked too, because right. for this computer, you couldn't have a segment of code that was longer than a thousand and twenty-four words. Oh, wow! Okay, because there was a little register in there that yeah. was on, that was ten bits. Ten bits, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it counted them. Yeah. There were program segment streaks, and then when yeah. it reached that, you go out and get another one. So okay. they actually had virtual memory way before anybody else. Oh, that yeah. kind of stuff. So you had to yeah. know these things because the first error I got when I tried to compile it, it's a yes. segment longer than a thousand and twenty-four words. Yes. I said, "What is this?" Yes. <laughs> okay, so you break it up into a block and you yeah. begin in, and you could do it and all yeah. that stuff. Was that the first time you used a computer or did you use I'd it? never even seen a computer before. Oh, really? Life. This was yes. 1965. Wow, yes. And so, I tucked it away, okay. And then, after that... Um, oh, sorry, what was the application of this jet? Was that for military? No, this, these or? are booster rockets. Booster rockets. And, and, you, and, and when you, they pack them with fuel. Yes. And there's possible ways, and they're hollow on the middle. Yes. Because you have to shoot flame. Yes. Down through there, and it burns. For, for mil military or bomb bombs or. Did they, no, for launching rockets, just whatever they launch. Oh, them, rockets in okay. space. Yes, in Not space. Military. Okay, sure, they were sure. Okay. Yeah. Was, yeah. They were beginning. You know, we were past Sputnik, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And they were yeah. launching spacecrafts. I don't yeah. know. They launched them. I don't know. Did they have satellites then? I'm not sure. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But all I know is I solid. I do solid fuel rockets. Yeah. Blah, blah. You had to pack it, and yeah. you could have all kinds of rotating surfaces in there. They could right. be circular one way or this way, yeah. and you rotate them around, and you'd have yes. bumps or you'd have holes, and they could be triangles and ellipses, yeah. whatever you would angles right, right. like this. And she had all possible configurations, yes. the normals to those things, and how they would burn out. Yeah, I see. I see. Yeah. And I did it. it yes. Was done. I left. And forgot about computers. Oh, really? You know, and, well, yeah. Well, actually, then I got a job, my first job, uh, working for Burroughs Corporation. Yes. And there, because I needed a job, and I, know what, I, I never knew what I really wanted to do, so I took this job. Right. And I learned to program operating system. Oh, I see. And they were called Master Control Program, MCP. I did other things, but they, they said, you take the hardware book and you learn the hardware. And I yes. really learned it. Yes. Because you could, they had, they were probably the best machines ever made. Yes. They had their all their compilers were yes. written in the language they compiled, and right. the other ones were all in assembly language. Oh, I see, yeah. And extended Algol was very far out, and above Algol they had a, something called SBAL, yes. which actually would allow you to access all of the hardware, yes. and, assist, and the OS was written in that. Right, I see. And I like these things because when they put a system, when they made something quiescent, they called it the bed. Okay. So it's, yeah. uh, this is, they had a little bit, I mean, they were engineers, but they had a sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they would go to Quest and put it to bed, wake yeah. it up, you know, it's been dreaming. They'd have all these co cool comments in the OS, which I yeah. found to be <laughs> But I also found it fascinating yeah. how OSs work. Okay. And then I took that away. Okay, that's cool. And my yes. next job, I uh, worked in the Applied Physics Lab at the University of Washington okay. as a mathematician working with a PhD in chemistry and yes. a PhD in physics. Yes. But it was essentially about, it was acoustics. Yes. And, 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 and I can talk about this. I couldn't talk about, I had to have a top secret thing. Okay. But, but I worked on the floor that wasn't top secret. I'm okay. sure that's all forgotten now anyway. Right. And essentially, it was shaped like an eyeball. Yes. Okay, so that you 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 ping and it would come back and it would go yeah. through various liquids and you get indices of refraction and mm -hmm. it'd be like a you know 
center of the focus would be here. Yes. And they were trying to see images and the solve the wave equations. Yes. And the wave equations ended up being spherical Henkel, fun Henkel functions yes. of complex variables, and you need numerical values, and there was no, they didn't exist. Yes. There were no APIs or anything, right? So I go to the library, get a stack of books, start reading, et cetera, et cetera, yes. and I figured out how to do this. Yes. Came up some numerical methods, and yes. I use uh, IBM 7094. Yes. Burroughs 5000. Yes. Those, those, and then the CDC uh, 6000. Yes. And the CDC and the uh, IBM were Fortran, and the uh, Burroughs was Algol. Yes. And I did this mathematics stuff and solved all these problems, but then I was thinking, you know, and this is losing interest. Yes. And then I saw a job there were for, a, although I had a master's, I could get a job as a lecturer in mathematics okay. at this yeah. university. In Washington, Washington was it? No, 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 no. This was at Cal Western University okay. in San Diego. It's okay. a small private school in Point Loma, beautiful location, yes. wonderful place. Yes. And uh, so I took the job. Yes. And Wade, Joan, and I, we had a little sports car, Datsun yes. 1600. We yes. dipped down, saw our parents in uh, yeah. San Francisco, and went down yeah. to San Diego. Yeah. And I remember we showed up there, and I grew up in this area, so this is my... This is in my DNA. Yeah, yeah. We were at the La Jolla Cove, which is a beautiful place. Right. And this was 1968. Yeah. I said, Joan, you like swimming? She said, yes. It was about 11 at night. Let's go out and walk in the water. This was summer. The temperature is probably 78 or something like this. And yeah. She just couldn't believe it. <laughs> so we did a lot of swimming. I yeah. taught at the university. And, you know, what's into it was fun because you have to teach the basic math. Yeah. Then you teach calculus. Yes. You teach differential equations. Yes. You teach advanced calculus. And you teach analysis. You did all this stuff. Yes. And I was the kind of person that I never used notes. Okay. Yes. I sit down at night, I look at the page I'm going yeah. to do, yeah. and I go in and I teach it. Oh, and wow. I just had yeah. it in my brain. Right? In your brain, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was there. And I looked at, when I taught calculus, I looked at all these problems I thought were hard, and I just saw all the solutions. Yeah. There's nothing to it. I did, but I, I was very careful yes. to try to involve the students in my class. Yes. So yes. I would often actually make an error. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I look around. Oh. Oh, is this right or wrong? Usually, <laughs> some students say, "Are you sure?" That <laughs> Mr. Yeager I said, "Very good." Because <laughs> you get kids' attention. Yes. Right? And in those days, it was first name because we were going through the '60s, and so things were becoming less formal. Yes. So it was first names only, and I said, "You can call me Bill," and blah blah blah. Yeah. And I was teaching this differential equations class. I still have the book back here. Yeah. <laughs> and I was having a good time. Three weeks in, a young woman comes up and says, Mr. Yeager, I said, yes, yes, you can call me Bill. Yeah. <laughs> she says, we don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I said, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, fuck, I guess I am the only one who does. <laughs> <laughs> so we, it was five hours a week. So yes. what I did, three hours a week, we would come into class and we would solve problems. Right. Together. Two hours, we would lecture. Right. And I said, <clears throat> if you come to all the classes, and do all this work, the yeah. lowest grade you'll get is a B. Yeah. And the kids' eyes were wide as can be. <laughs> and I had the greatest, I had 19 grade students, 20 uh, yeah. grade students. Yeah, yeah. Because the, the, we, I moved away the fear. Yes. And the incentive was to learn differential equations. And right. these kids learned and that this book is actually quite difficult and the problems yeah. are difficult and yeah. they did quite well. Yes. And that was sort of my style. Yes. And then uh, I, won't, I won't go into again. Essentially, what happened yeah. there was kind of unpleasant, but. Yeah. The students used to have to go to Tijuana to drink. Yes. Okay. And it yes. was very dangerous to go down there and right. they did this. And all they wanted to do is those of age would like a little alcohol. Yes. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, the president of the place was a recovered alcoholic. I see. And so he refused. And okay. So the students then had a little rebellion. Yes. They were going to withhold their uh, tuition. And the school was running on tuition. Yes. It was a very expensive place. Right. And so... There were 21 new faculty members, yes. and so they had a little kind of, the, the president was going to have his little colloquium to tell all people how wrong this was, and yes. the students were going to stand on the hill. Yes. So 19 of the 21 new professors said, well, we're in the middle. Yeah. We don't, we don't have, a, we're doing, we're not, we don't want to take a side on this, yes. because it's the students and the president are arguing. Right. And so, you know, it's like this, he wanted us to sign a loyalty oath. Mm-hmm. Loyalty to the president? Or? Yeah, to yes, the okay. president. Okay. And if you don't, you would lose your job. Okay. So we, none of us, 19 out of 21, did not sign. Oh, gosh. Yeah, we yeah. lost our jobs. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the, the dean of instruction who hired us resigned. 
Oh, really? Because of some really great faculty members. Yes. Yeah. You know, and some of us remained, because I came back to the Bay Area, yeah. and um, some of them went, up, went up elsewhere, and they're all quite successful people. Yes. So that was that job, and then I decided, well, I was in, we were in the summer, so I decided we'd go back and live in Berkeley. Yeah. The summer of 68 is yeah. notorious. Wow. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because I was there 67 through 68, you know. Yeah. <laughs> And the summer of 68 is notorious at Berkeley. And so yeah. we went through all of that. And wow. my wife was pregnant and we got a little dog and we yeah. watched cops drive around. It Gosh. was kind of crazy. And then I saw a job for uh, someone to teach calculus physics yes. uh, at a community college in Gilroy. Okay. So I did it. I said, yeah. I'm going, it wasn't far. It's just down south of San, San yeah. Jose. Yeah. And at that time, there were nothing. There was nothing between San Jose and Gilroy. Right. A couple of little towns, Warren yes. Hill and... Yes. Some other one, whatever it is. Anyway. Yeah. anyway, so I was there for a year, and I had 180, uh, a class of 180 students, a lot of them are Latinos. Yes. Uh, a few Japanese. All right. Uh, a few people of color. Yes. Uh, we call them black in those days. Yes. Uh, and uh, then the rest were just standard kids. And so I had, there was a problem with the uh, Latino girls because they couldn't come to my office hours okay. without a chaperone. Oh, right. Because Latino families are very strict about how they raise their daughters. Yes, yeah, yes. Okay. So I asked, I said, Julio Gonzalez, I said, Julio, can you bring your uncle yeah. <laughs> to bring your sister <laughs> to my office hours? Yeah. And so I started just bringing the, these young girls in, yes. brought them to my office hours, right. and had their chaperones, and we yeah. started helping them. Yeah. And then I talked to the dean of instruction, yeah. Sylvester Heinberg. Yes. And I have a letter up there still of recommendation from him. Wow. Then I decided to leave. <laughs> wow. And go do doctor studies. Yes. And I said, Sylvester, these kids, I cannot follow the curriculum or the curses it's set up because yes. these kids are too far behind. Yes. I want to do my own way. I want to start back. I want to teach them how to add fractions, multiply fractions. Yes. Some of these very basic things so that yes. they can exactly move into the class. And he right. Said, okay, you can do it. But, you know, you, have, you better do it well. Yes. Yes. And so I did. And uh, finally, at the end of the first semester, we gave a test, and my students scored higher than anyone ever in the history of wow. the school, wow. especially the Latino kids. That's fantastic. And so then the second semester went fine, and we, I did teach, get to teach some calculus and calculus with physics, and yes. they actually had a little computer, it was called a Wang calculator, oh, okay. <laughs> and it's a little thing you made a punch card, yeah. and, and you could put it in there, and then it would do a series for okay. you and stuff like that. So okay. I was, that was the only, oh, there, oh yeah, there was a GE450. Oh, I see. Yeah. The GE450 yeah. from the 50s that was run on tubes. Yes. And there was a kid there who was staying extra years because he was in love with this computer. He said, watch, <laughs> Mr. Yeager, I can yeah. put butterflies in the, in the lights. Yes. <laughs> I said, let me write a little program that does a loop. And then he says, and you can ring a bell. And it would yeah. go ding, ding. <laughs> it was just right, a four right. Four I equals one to ten. I plus plus. You know, yeah, yeah. Ring bell. Yeah. It was that slow, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so you, you, then I said, well, this could <laughs> is sort of worthless in some ways, but yeah. it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. But this guy didn't want to leave because it was his... Uh, buddy kind of his friend I don't know where he went <laughs> so what did I do after that geez okay so I uh, Cal Western and then I went to Gilroy and did that thing oh yeah so then uh, I, I was there for one year and I decided well you know this is interesting but I want to learn more math more math yes so I went to the University of Washington and worked on a PhD yes and finished all my coursework and was into writing theses. Yes. And I had a job as a research assistant in the computer science department. Okay. Because... But you were doing a piece in mathematics department. But I was majoring in mathematics. Yes, yes. But I, because I knew computers and I knew they had a Burroughs there. Yes. You know, body, 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 et cetera. Just because yeah. the university, same as the applied physics lab. Yes, yes. A few years later. Yes. Upgraded their systems, but they yes. had them. They had added a Xerox Sigma 7, which was an assembly language machine, little that I know I would be working on that sucker for five years at Ness Ames later. Yes. So anyway, I did that, and I taught topology to computer science graduate students, and they taught me robotics, and right. I did a lot of stuff, and I yeah. made some, wrote additions to the operating system, et cetera. Yes. And so I was there, and I was thinking, I'm here, I'm a very good mathematician, I'm working on a thesis, my yeah. doctor, my, my thesis advisor was Robert Moore. Yes. I said, you know, but there are people here 
We've been doing mathematics since there were seven. Yes. Now these people are going to go off and someone are going to change the world. I can yeah. be a great mathematician, good yeah. mathematician. Yeah. I can go off and teach at university, write some papers, etc. Yeah. But I think that no any I watched this hardware evolve. I, th I think computing is probably a better direction for me. Yes. Okay. So I never really finished my degree. I finished yeah. all the courses. Yes. Yes. You had a gut feeling computing is going to be important. Well, I, just, I just watched. I watched the hardware advance. Yes, yes. And I saw how things were changing. Yes. And uh, I thought, I'm going to go out and do computing and see where it takes me. Yes, yes. It was a fortuitous decision. Yes. And then I got. What year was this? Sorry. Yeah. What year was this when you decided? Uh, this was 1971. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I got a job at um, NASA Ames Research. Okay. And I was writing parts of operating systems. It was uh, on Sigma Xerox Sigma sevens, fives, sevens, and eights, or something. Yes. For mission control for right. the Pioneer projects that right. sent the first rockets to Jupiter. Yes. And uh, this was fun. I did it. I had, I had some very interesting uh, experiences there. And yes. I was quite good at it. And yes. The, the only one most of the, it had some humorous experiences. Yeah. There. Because yeah. I wrote, a part of my operating system, I wrote two parts, it was telemetry. Yes. So the <laughs> spacecraft, I'm gonna, I need water in a minute. Okay, so you're working at the uh, uh, NASA. At, at NASA Ames Research, yeah. The same research. And um, Mission Control, mm, OS, <clears throat> on the Xerox Sigmas. We actually had several, but it, it, we had Sigma, Sigma 5, Sigma 7, Sigma 8. And the, the Sigma 8 was, the you know, the big guy but you, they're all the same just different speeds I guess yes and these were actually the first systems that introduced paging uh, they actually had they had paging most of the systems didn't and yes. this was actually invented by a guy who worked with Doug Engelbark over at SRI oh really yeah wow. uh, I forget his name but yeah. they did page they did we, we, had, we had a friend there later we saw all that stuff the mouse etc yes yes at the same time actually. the same time right yeah wow because we lived, we lived in this area. We lived in Palo Alto, then yeah. in this house, and SRI is about a five-minute walk. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, anyway, so you write all... In these days, it was punch cards. Okay. Okay. And, you know, the part, you, you would have two or three trays yes. this long of punch cards. Wow. So maybe, you know, four or five, six hundred. Yeah. Just punch cards. They're all yeah. sequenced, so if yeah. you drop one, they come back together right yes okay yeah. so I did telemetry and the telemetry for a spacecraft when the spacecraft is being launched it, it just comes back in what's called raw mode okay it's, isn't put into blocks right as it would be later when they would actually go through the jet propulsion lab right they would take and block it up and they would move and then they, you know but there are keys to say when the blocks begin yeah and the way they do it is they point a little like a rifle at it okay. that, it, that, that actually is receiving the signal and yes. then the rifle comes in and goes by my or drives, etc. Okay, so we were going up and the thing was going up. Okay. Yeah. And I had a bug. Okay. And my program. Okay. Right. And, and it, actually when you tested the program, they had a simulator. Yeah. And the simulator was the same spacecraft that would spin around, but yes. of course it can't, it's not in a rocket ship going Right. Around, you know, so yeah. So, okay, so I said, I have a bug, and uh, my boss was Denny. Yes. And I looked at the code, the code and he was hanging over my shoulder, and yeah. I said, Denny, I don't need you there. <laughs> okay. He backed off. I right. took a look at the code, I saw it. It was a piece of code, actually, it was just like three steps, but it was never executed. Okay. And I had a typo. Oh, really? Okay. And in assembly language, you know, <laughs> if you have yeah. a slight typo, it'll, yeah. it'll be executed. Yeah. It's there, and it would have been kind of silly. Yeah. But it actually was executed during the thing, and I okay. saw it immediately. So I took it, I said, oh, I fixed this, and I took it out, and I rewrote, and I added, I made it simplified to code, and reduced it from so many cards, just yeah. by making tables and going yeah. through, et cetera, et cetera, and off of what? Took it, pushed the cards in, done, and yeah. by the thing, and that, yeah, I had this done in about five minutes, and right. it was fine. And Denny was very angry at me. <laughs> And about just after it got up there, suddenly the whole system stopped working. There was a bug in his coat. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I looked at Denny and I smiled and said, let's look at the code together because <laughs> he wanted me to help him. Yeah, and he yeah. fixed the bug and then he yeah. apologized to me. And yeah. said, look, these things happen, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And what did your program do uh, for the spacecraft? Well, my the first one, essentially, the, the data comes back in the spacecraft at different bit rates. Yes. It comes back. 
there, it, it comes back raw, had these little frame bits, but it yes. goes through JPL after everything that's up there. Yes. And it comes, they block it, comes back. Yes. And then you take these and the, it has condition of the spacecraft. There were, like, I don't know, let's say 20 experiments. It's for different experiments. So you route it off to the different experiments in the software. Uh, some of it's imaging, and I actually worked on on the part that actually took the imaging data and, and saved that. And, you know, and this is very amazing because in those days, Everything was analog. It didn't. Oh. It, so, so the images were, were not called. They were recorded as analog on okay. disk. Okay. These images the spacecraft is taking. It, it actually had a. It's called a photopolymeter. Okay. Photo photopolymeter. Yeah. It took red and blue, and then I think you put in uh, yellow or something. Okay. And then you got the colors. Yes. And then we actually when we got close to Jupiter, and this yes. is when this was had this the uh, guy who made the. There's a guy who made the TV. It had to be a special TV. Yeah, one. right. And all the equipment was yeah. visiting us. Yeah. And anyway, what happened then, you'd get it and, it, and the way it worked is a stepping motor. Okay. And it would step through 180. Oh. It would roll, step, yes. roll, step. Okay. And so you got a bunch of stripes. Yes. Red and blue. Okay, you could right. mix in the other color to make it right. Yes. And then it would arrive on the TV and you could use resistors, pots, uh -huh. to shrink it back and okay. a beautiful Jupiter. Oh, okay. But wow. now the data also would go off on mag tapes yes. to go to the University of Arizona. Okay. Uh, I think it's, it's Kitts Peak Observatory and those guys were there and then they would run all kinds of mathematical analysis oh. on it. They would do some, like anything else, it's pixels and you can run yes. some algorithms over for the transforms and all that stuff and get much more detail. Yes, it's amazing. Okay. Yeah. And so anyway, this guy shows up here. We invite him to dinner. And he looks at our TV and yeah. he was getting very upset. <laughs> so before dinner, he had the whole TV out on the floor. Yeah. And he was adjusting everything and he yeah. put it right. Yeah. And set up. He says, now that's better, isn't <laughs> it? <laughs> All right. And so I was there for, four, for the Pioneer uh, 10 and 11. Yeah. And, and ended up about there for almost four years. Yeah. And then I finally, uh, you know, it became maintenance. I never liked maintenance. But I, my final job was I, I just wrote a, a complete cross-referencing system for the assembly language operating system. You had to go into the linker and see how it worked and body, 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 bond. Yeah. Do all this cool stuff. And I got that done. I said, this is, I need to get out of here. Yeah. Why did you think that? Because I was bored. Okay. Yeah. So there was a girl there, Rose, and she says, Bill. I just interviewed for a job at Stanford, and I think it's the one for you. I can't do it. <laughs> yeah. And she gave me the Stanford Daily, yeah. and the guy in there was Tom Renfleth, yeah. and I called him up. Yeah. And I said, yeah, okay. I went over there, and we had an interview, and we talked, and he said, you've got a lot of jobs, haven't you? I said, yeah. yeah. I haven't really found the one I want to settle into. <laughs> and he says, well, if you show up here, I need to rock up your Bronker. Oh. I said, okay, I'll do that. He says, but before you do, I, yeah. I think you can do the job, but I'm not sure. I'll give you a problem. Okay. And you go home to Friday, and you come back Monday with your solution. Okay. Then if you come back with Monday, I'll, with a solution of Monday, I'll hire you. Okay. What it was <laughs> is that this, this was at a mass, uh, gas chromatograph mass spectroscopy yeah. lab. Yeah. And uh, it, had, it was like, related to the Department of Inherited Rare Diseases. And yeah. uh, the, the, the kids would have some disease. They take their blood, their urine. They do all these chemical yes. extracts. You run them through a grass, gas chromatograph. Graph would go up, go through yes. the mass spectrometer, yes. and body, 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 and it, it, this thing just, you could run, we ran low resolution from mass 440 to 440, yes. 440 to 440, and you would get what's called spectrum of each thing, and you could actually break out the molecules, but it was very difficult to do, right? because there's a lot of noise, a lot of, but there's, there's just pieces that's broken into yes. fragments of okay. molecules, yes. and some of them are not valid. They, yes. You just toss them and then you keep them yes. anyway. Yes. And so the problem was when everything's turned off, yes. there's dark current in there and there's yes. a photo plate. Right. And there's stuff bouncing around. Yeah. How are you going to figure out what the dark current is so you can remove it? Right. And I said, oh, well, let me think about that. He says, I'll tell you. He says, it's a Gaussian. Okay. Said, well, let me see. And I thought about it for a while and I said, well, I sort of imagined as a curtain was going, I'd never seen a histogram before. Yes. But I imagined it as a curtain would be going up and, yes. and these things would kind of reach a maximum, right? Yes. And then the, after the curtain got higher, the, the just, you wouldn't get into those higher masses, right? And then, and, and so you would get sort of a peak like this. Yes. And so I said, so you just start counting 40 for 40, blah, 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 blah. you get a peak, blah, 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 and that would be it. Yes. Yeah. You know, you're not going to get everything in there. I don't know what's floating in there, but you yeah. certainly aren't going to have, you know, carbon and all of these good things. Yes. 
And so, okay, so I told him that was it. Then he said, are you sure you didn't break yeah. into the lab over the weekend? <laughs> <laughs> and so he hired me, right? And yeah. uh, I, it ends up when I took Chem A1B, yeah. I never lost a point. Oh, I'm wow. very good at chemistry. Yeah, yeah. I was. Yeah. And so I could do the analytical chemistry, yeah. and there was a guy there, uh, yeah. Jeff Thome, he yeah. was from the University of Wollongong, and he was doing a visiting scholar, for okay. me, his PhD, and he yes. started a thesis. Yes. And, uh, not a thesis, he started a, a computer program that he had designed that would remove all the noise from these, from the spectra yes. that they came over, okay? Yes. So you could actually find the peaks, you know, okay. C12, C13, yes. et cetera, et cetera, going out to mass flow 40, and yes. then... You take these and once you found them, you would print them out and yes. you'd give them to the chemist and, and the chemist would identify them and then you'd put them into a library. Right. And then you'd do library matching and all that stuff. And I so see. he says, well, if Tom says, yeah, about Jeff leaves in six weeks, you have to learn his cell phone. Yes. So I have a rule I have. Yeah. And uh, there are a lot of people who really understand. I said, the rule is you start at line one. All right. <laughs> and you read the code and yeah. you understand it. Yeah. I understood the math. And I tell yeah. some people that, and they say, don't you want documentation? No, start at line one. Okay, yeah. And uh, the people I know who are into computing right now, they're really into it, agree with this. Right. So I started at one, line one, it was a yeah. Fortran 4 program, blah, yeah. blah, 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 and I started going through and doing yeah. the analysis. In those days, you had to build your own load maps. Wow. You had to do all of the stuff, because, yeah. with, you know, here, yeah. and then we'll have these functions over here, you know, and at this level, and you can break it into levels, and some stayed all the time, some could, you, know, you had to do all that stuff. Yes. So it was yeah. really, and you also had to know the hardware very well because I ran the whole lab. And if things yeah. broke, I'd have to call a deck, and these were PDP 1135s running RSX 11M. Yes. And whatever it was. And you had to go in and modify the OS because we wanted bigger disk files. Wow. Than they actually allowed yes. because we wanted to write bigger records. So yeah. it was very diverse. We even had our own, they actually made a network that was a PDP 11 Unibus. They went to the other room, yeah. big thing like this, and we yeah. moved, that's how we moved the data. We didn't oh, wow. use tapes, right? Yeah. There's all kinds of cool things going yeah. on. And I had a, Nick Bezades was a hybrid engineer, the guy that worked with me, and he taught me all about hardware, and it was a wonderful job. And so the program worked, got yes. it done. Jeff left, he says, after six weeks, he says, well, you know what, better than I do. <laughs> I told the boss, and it was a great job. It yeah. been about three years, though. Yes. And, um, Got it all done because it was that much work to really get everything. Wow. And it was shipped out and the EPA took it. A guy knocked on my door. His name is Bruce Hodge. He yes. says, I'm from the EPA. We want to use your software for finding pollutants in water. Oh, Teach wow. me how to use it. Yes. Because I ship you know, tapes all over the world. Wow. And you had to not, when you ship the tape, you had to write the tape drivers. You had to do all the stuff. Yes. Different people went different format. You did everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the way you went. Okay. So, of course, Bruce later came back here. He quit because he liked this area and he went to work for NASA Ames. Okay. Where you and were then, before. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, and then he ended up working at Adobe afterwards for many oh, years. And yeah. we have some photographs of his in the other room, actually. Oh, wow. He's a professional photographer. Wow. But so that, that happened, and the program actually won, I think it's called the American Analytical Association or something like that, Chemistry Association Program of the Year in 1978. Wow. And I have a big book back here behind me where wow. some of the papers I did are in it. Wow. And I did it with a lot of, a lot of people in some groups. Yes. And so it was a pretty good piece of work. Yeah. And then our, our director was Josh Lederberg, a guy yes. who got a Nobel Prize when he was younger than 30. My goodness. He was the last interview, by the way. After I passed Tom's yeah. test, I had to go talk to Josh. Oh, I see. <laughs> and he, he is a nice, one of the nicest people I've ever met in my yeah. life. I mean, yeah. he, clearly he was a super hyper genius. Yes, okay. yes. There's no doubt about it. Yes. And he was one of these guys that, he was in the Navy. And when he yes. got out of the Navy, he went over to the Princeton, the advanced, <laughs> whatever, the Princeton, the, the, the Princeton, uh, Princeton University, they have an advanced lab place where Einstein, all those guys went. Wow. Well, he just, so he came there and uh, they said, his friends, some of the people said, look, just give Josh a lab and let him work. He didn't have yeah. a PhD or anything. You're right, right. This, okay. this guy, he knows what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. Well, he was, this was in the late 40s, and yeah. in, the, in the 50s, he got a Nobel Prize. Oh my goodness, yeah. Of course, they, they just gave him a PhD, I guess. <laughs> but he was so No much. Nobel Prize in, in, in what? In, uh, in genetics. In genetics, okay. He, yeah. he discovered something about asexual reproduction in oh, bacteria, okay, which ultimately led to the uh, you know recombinant DNA and all that kind of work. Wow, wow, yeah. Uh, and he just, and also, 
Although he was in the Department of Genetics, there was another program going on called Dendro, which yes. was part of the lab I was in, and it yeah. did involve actually being able to do computer modeling of molecules and all that stuff. It wasn't wow. done yet. And he came up with the primary, primary algorithms there, although yes. he wasn't a chemist, right? Yes. I mean, he just had that kind of mind. Yes. You walk in this office, it's just a pile of books. Yeah. And there's this kind of slightly chubby guy sitting in there, very friendly. We talked. And yeah. I told him about NASA and all this stuff. He says, well, maybe we should put up essentially just these microwave networks between buildings and all yes. this stuff. Said, maybe we should do He started talking about that kind of stuff. You know? Yes. He was, and he says, okay, well, you're hired. You know? <laughs> So Josh uh, Letterberg um, left in 1978 to become the uh, president of, uh, of New York, <laughs> some university in New York. Yes. Who's escaping right now? Uh -huh. Her brain's getting tired. And uh, you know, anyway, it'll come to me. Columbia? No, no, no. <laughs> but it was something like that. Yeah. Anyway, it was in New York. And so because he did that, uh, our project was terminated. Okay. Now my brain is doing a search on this universe. <laughs> and so uh, I was offered a job uh, to work on the Summit Same Research Lab Group as part of the system staff at Stanford University Medical Experimentation in Artificial Intelligence and Medicine. Brain yes. is trying to find this other thing. Okay. <laughs> okay. So anyway, uh, so I, I took it and uh, my says Again, this is a member of the system staff there, and uh, we worked on some interesting things, like for example, Zuckerberg thinks space time is unique. It's not unique because yeah. we had something called a bulletin board, one of those programs I took over, yes. which was the same thing, but everybody had their own bulletin board, and this yeah. was running on big systems, 10x systems, and all of that stuff. Yeah. And uh, so. That was the original Facebook. But we didn't call it Facebook, but everybody had that. You yeah. could share and you could post things on your bulletin yeah, yeah. board and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I got involved in some other very interesting software. But one of the things we needed was there was people like at the University of Santa Cruz had to bring tapes up and put their program on it and yes. take the software on it, take it back down there. And so yes. Tom says, well, what we need is a some kind of networking protocol, something that we, you can run on telephone wires, it's right. like FTP. Yes. So I said, okay, I'll write that. Yeah. I, I really did. Well, I did have deep space network. Right. I knew about packets. Yes. And so uh, I said, okay. And so I sat down and thought about it. And uh, this is where I met Mark. Sorry, Bill. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, by the way, Josh uh, Letterberg became the president of Rochester University. Okay. So we've got that. Yeah. We'll get yeah. back in there and swapped in. So you're talking about making the okay, uh, networking. So, yeah. so anyway, what I did is I, I was looking for documentation. I found documentation on something called Dialnet, and it was Mark Christman had written it in uh, at uh, when he was at Sale, which yes. is Stanford AI Lab. Yes. So I called Mark over and talked to him about it. Yes. And he said, yeah, and I asked him if I could just use the, the protocol. Yeah. Well, it was pretty, pretty, very, very complicated. Yeah. And I was talking to a friend of mine who's a... Uh, Vaughn Pratt, who was a professor over there in operating system, he says, I've never seen anybody actually write an implementation of this, but yeah. who knows. But I said, so I simplified it, yeah. and I used this yeah. to write this, who I call TTY FTP. Oh, and it worked quite well. You could okay. go, you know, you could go, it was on twisted pairs, of yes. course, and you send bytes, and you yes. need checksums, and yes. you need all that stuff, and it needs binary, and yes. it, it, all that stuff, because you're yes. sending binary stuff, you're yes. not just sending ASCII. Yes. And so we did that, and it would work between systems, and that was nice. And yes. then it's interesting. And then about, I wrote that, okay. And then yeah. I and I was doing other things. Uh, and then um, Tom said, "Well, you know, Bill, this was like nineteen, end of nineteen seventy nine." Yeah. He said, Xerox Park has given us a bunch of ETH three megabit Ethernet hardware. The Alpha, these were called Altos. A bunch of cables and transceivers which you plugged in and yeah. all that stuff. And yes. you're our packet guy, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he says, well, we need something. They call them gateways. Yes. Uh, would you write a gateway? Okay. Okay. Well, all, all right. right. What's a gateway? Yeah. So Park also gave us some software. Okay. It was written in BCPL. Yeah. And they had something called an Ether tip software. Yes. Okay, which is... Ether to turn on interface processor, so you could go on the Ethernet and connect to another system on the Ethernet yes. and do sort of terminal level stuff. Yes. Right? Yes. 
And I looked in there, and there was something called a gateway, but there was nothing there. Mm -hmm. And then I looked carefully at this code, and there was no operating system. It was yeah. just some plenty of push up, down, code routine, crazy thing. And yes. I, and I said, no, I want something more general. So I said, yes. okay. First, I'm going to write an operating system. Yeah. I know about operating systems. Yeah. And I will write a lean and mean network operating system because I wanted everything to run at hardware speed. So I wouldn't load it into a system that had right. an operating system. It was yeah. going to run in there, and that would be it. Yes, yes. And so I did this. In fact, I wrote a simulator on, on a 10x system yeah. uh, because I found a, and I needed a language. Yes. Well, what I found was at Bell Labs, uh, some guy had written a, a C, but it would cross-compile on a on 10x system mm -hmm. and then I could actually so I could run it actually on I could run it on 10x yeah and kind of do a prototype it then yeah. I can cross compile it get assembly language out assemble it downstairs yes. on my PDP uh, you know 11s yes and then, I, and then I could I, you know I could run it up through an assembler and yeah. I could get the object systems I think I mean I could get the whole object code on there I'd get everything and yes. then I could just take and drop that into the system right. Run it. right right so I said Alan it was the Alan Schneider C compiler Yes. Portable C compiler. Yes. So I built a simulator, et cetera, et cetera. I got it to work and then yeah. I got it, I put it in and it was, you know, and this was a full blown hospital. There was no diff. Right. So you need, you need memory allocation, you needed IO drivers, you needed the various, what I did learn from the BCPL were the various levels of the stack of, you know, it was called Park Universal Packet. Yes. You know, you had, a, you had application, transport, body, 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 yeah. body, 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 all that stuff. Yeah. So I put that together, the operating system, yeah. and then I got it, I ran it on a PDP 11. Yes. And then I wrote, I had to write IO drivers because, right. of course, it's easy, you know, so you write that in assembly language yeah. and you stick those things in there. Yeah. We only had 56K bytes. Right. Uh, that's all I had in the yeah. thing. So, and I got all that stuff to run. Yes. And that was on three megabit Ethernet. Yes. And, it, and, and then by the end of 1980. Yeah. In early '81, I had I had that. Well, I had this running in about six months, just doing Park Universal packet writing. Okay. And I also had a little. They had something called Echo, and you could do echoes, and and I had put a nice little user interface in there because I like statistics. I like yes. implementation. I could see how many processes are running. Yes. How much of the CPU was being used. Yes. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All that. Yes. Things. Nice system. Yes. Ran on PDP 11. Then uh, around. So just 1981, but towards the middle, towards the very end, Tom went over to uh, SRI. Yes. It's called Network Information Center, and brought back some TCP/IP stuff. Right. And I right. looked at the IP thing, and I said, "Well, that's interesting." Yeah. You know, it's, it, 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 yeah. It, it's it's a simple protocol, and it's a, and I talked to people, and they said this thing is going to be the coming thing. So what I yeah. did is I just put a little router in there for IP. Yes. Okay, so I could then, I, and the only thing I could do is ping. Oh. But they didn't call it ping then. Okay, the right. ICMP echo. Yes, okay. Because ping was, the name ping came in 1983 from some guy somewhere. So I did yeah. ICMP <laughs> echo, right? So I could do yeah. pop echo, pick up, ICMP echo, just to kind of write it, did it for the fun of it, because I was anticipating this thing coming down the pipe. Yeah. And then 10 megabit Ethernet came in around 1982. Wow. So I got rewrote everything. Yeah. And now I had actually Andy Bechtelstein's Sunboard, which became Sun Microsystems. Oh, okay. And this thing, because that was his master's thesis, mm -hmm. and they have a nice rule at Stanford that your master's thesis belongs to the person who writes it. I see. They can take it to students. Okay. For all research, that's yeah. what they have, right? So yeah, I took, yeah. we took that board. Actually, a guy. Uh, there were some bugs. We helped him bug. He had a, some kind of bit splice. Yeah. slice processor he did some debugging and yeah. stuff over so we got all that working and i got that working and then i rewrote everything and i had now what sounded enormous to me yeah 256k bytes of memory wow <laughs> given 56k bytes so yeah. i rewrote the whole thing i yeah. wrote it in a different in, in standards Kerningham richard c on a vax running uh berkeley unix got yeah. all that stuff running uh this this then became then on there, I wrote it. At first, I wrote it pup. I, I had IP, but IP hadn't arrived yet. Okay. But it still would do that. Had the basic uh, router in there. Yeah. And then XNS came along, Xerox Network Services, yes. which became XIP, and it was a very beautiful uh, 10 megabit yes. uh, protocol. Yes. So I did those three. And. Uh, 
got that all running and also had things like I, I had a, on my system, I had name lookup services and all yes. that stuff because we used pup name lookup right. because we didn't have uh, DNS yet. Yeah. All right. But it had to be ready for DNS because DNS, we had our own root servers. So yeah. We had all the stuff coming in and then overnight that yes. swap happened. Yes. Then I put in their chaos net because we got these uh, Texas Instruments uh, list machines, which came via MIT, and they ran common list and <coughs> got all those. So got that routing all working, and the routers were pretty sound. And I did actually a total re rewrite in 1985 because yeah. I had kind of a blend of yeah. what it looked like on the PDP 11 and right. whatever, and made a, a really purified yeah. stuff. Okay, so by 85 it was pretty solid. Although I continued. To support this until '89, back into the early yeah. '90s, because yeah, and you're working at uh, uh, Sun then, right? No, I was still no. working at Stanford. I oh, still work at Stanford. Okay, yeah, yeah. But I had lots of other projects. Yes, okay. That's the point. Yeah, yeah. I did this, and it was coming. Yeah, it was coming to a close. Yeah, I had done this IMAP thing with Mark, and uh, tell us a little bit more about that. How did that happen? Well, it's it's very interesting because okay, so the routers are there. I did continue to maintain and add other features. Like one of them was is that our PC didn't work. Uh, only worked on local nets. Yes. And we only had we couldn't have afford to have a Sun server on every local net. So yes. I stayed home. Chris worked during a Christmas vacation. Reversed engineer it. Yes. So that actually the P, the clients thought that the router was itself the actual RPC server, but it wasn't. And okay. I kept little tables in there and I just yeah. forward. And so then I became a pro proxy that. Yes. Got that all working, put lots yeah. of cool little features in there that kept, that were requirements finally to, to terminate it all. Yeah. Even up until 1989, Cisco, we couldn't use Cisco stuff I would have liked to. Yes. Because they didn't have chaos net in there. Okay. So yeah. this guy from Cisco shows up in my office. Yeah. He's an engineer. He yeah. says, well, I have a bug. Okay. We're putting it in Cisco. And I said, yeah, you took it out. I put it in. Okay. <laughs> okay. And so I actually got to from my office, telling it into Cisco. Okay. I looked at the code. I said, that's simple. Yeah. They just do reverse byte ordering than, than everybody else. MIT yeah. does everything backwards. You have right. to understand this. So we did a little, so there's a little, the little C command you do to swap the byte. I don't know. Does it by. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Yeah. yeah. I didn't charge him. Right. <laughs> Uh, I had a I had other battles with Cisco. We don't have to go into those. Yeah. And anyway, so that terminated that project. And I was beginning another one, but I will go back to IMAP. Yeah. IMAP is motivated. Yeah, we had a lot of list machines, especially Park. They had the the, the, mm -hmm. the Dolphin, the Dandelion, and the Dorados. And the yes. Dorados were expensive, the high computing kind. Yes. And what we wanted to do was computing on those and then a way to do remote virtual graphics to other things like Sun workstations, et yes. cetera. Okay. And so I said, I'll do it. Yeah. Because I always like to take on jobs that other people refuse to take yeah. on. Because this is the only way I'd learn something <laughs> yeah, yeah, in yeah. the first place. And so I took a look at the problem and then I noticed that uh, at that time there was a V system running called a Distributed Operating System written by David Sheraton yes. and something called a virtual turbo, what's it, virtual, it was a virtual terminal yes. system yes. and that was written by Keith, uh, Keith Lance, yes. virtual, terminal, uh, virtual terminal service yes. and I looked at the virtual terminal service and it was exactly, it, it ran, we had Sun model number Sun one model no, no, number nine, number ten. Yeah, yeah. When Sun started in 83, yeah. They had 10 of these made in a garage and they started charged 10,000 each and they sold 10 to Stanford. We bought one. Sun wow. model one, number 10. Yeah, yeah. And that ran the V system and it had a V messaging system. Okay. And so I used this to do virtual graphics so you could compute yes. on these systems. Yes. And then it would come and it would display yeah. very beautifully. Yeah, and yeah. I, I used their messaging system and in the, in the, in the, it was, it was a remote procedure call. Right. Like, like uh, and, uh, what it used in the messaging system was something called structured display files. Okay. And structured display, the structured display files were for graphics. Yes. And of course, text would be text. Yes. As I explained to you once, a circle is just a point. Yes. A center, a center and a radius. And yeah. a square is opposing this. And it's yeah. in a spline, they send the curls. And you yeah. could set the degree of spline on the client. Yes. The client was really the server. And it was right. the client, whatever. 
And so I thought, this is cool. Yeah. I said, I really, I don't like the way mail works. Yeah. And what I would like to do is use something very similar. Yeah. And so it was send the features of an email. Yeah. Like the, all the headers. Send yeah. all the headers. Right. Well, you don't, you know, you don't, the networks with 10 megabits with, you know, uh, two or 300 users, you, you had to, you wanted to spare bandwidth, yes. but then you'd fetch the text, yes. but only of the messages that you want to see. Right, right. And you could use enough information from the headers to display a browser. Yes. And body, 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 blah. And so I designed up this whole thing. And we were also moving from then tops 20 to Sun Systems. And as a consequence, everybody was used to something called MM, the mail manager. Yes. And they wanted every command that's an MM to right. be in this new protocol. Okay. So I took them all. Okay. Yeah. And I said, you know what? Now Mark over there, Crispin, yeah. who worked in computer science, yeah. claims to be the world maintainer of MM. Okay. So I think I'm going to hire Mark. Okay. Because he knows all these commands. Yeah. He said he got them down. You know, all you got to yeah. do is take, essentially, if you look at, First RFC for our IMAP, and yeah. you look at the you look at MM. It's the yeah. same command. Oh. Okay. Who, who who funded this project? It was funded by NIH. Okay, so it's like a research grant. Yeah, everything yeah. is funded by. It's all research grant yeah. stuff. Yeah. And I I talked to Tom and I said yeah. if I could get some money. First, I had to make a grant proposal, get the money to do the darn yeah. thing, and then I need the money for one more person. He yeah. says, "Okay, you can do one more. You yeah. can get Mark. Okay, you, yeah. remember it's you and Mark working. Okay, keep the noise down." <laughs> and Mark was a bit of excitable. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> but he was very. He was, I really liked him. He was yeah. a very good guy. Yeah. And uh, so we sat down and banged this thing out, and with a few arguments, I I, I didn't like all the there's a bunch of S expressions in there. Yeah. And Mark, who had lived in the world of macro languages, macro assembly languages on yeah. top 20, he's a top 20 world class OS programmer, yeah. Yeah. wanted to go to Lisp. Okay. Well, it ends up that if you have a bunch of S expressions in Lisp, there's yeah. a statement, I think it's called read seed. Yeah. You just read it into the structure, it'll right, parse right. it for you. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And so he did that. And I, 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 I wanted name value pairs because then yes. I said, if you don't have a subject, why put it in there? Just yes. Know it, you know? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so there's a bunch of nils in there, right? Because yeah. nils end up being nothing and fills in empty spots. Yeah. So Mark wins. He wins big arguments. Yeah. It's not worth it. It wasn't worth the pain, as they say. Send up on the pen in French. It's not, the, it's not worth the pain there, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so Mark did that and we got it going. Yeah. And then he started writing the first Lisp client. Yes. Called. Um, Something MM, D, uh, MMD right. for do Dolphin and Dandel Dandelion. Right? Yes. And I wrote the first Unix server. Yes. And we got that all going. And then uh, after that, uh, Mark, this, this went on, on and off for probably the work. Because the, then I actually wrote the first Macintosh right. sort of thing. And a guy yeah. named Frank Gilmurray, I was helping, he was helping, we were working together, yes. but then he left and went somewhere else right. to a different company. So I finished that thing off. Yes. And I actually went over that time we had, the networks had expanded. We had a Bay Area network. Okay. And Apple was on the Bay Area network. Wow. Yeah. So I took the thing over, took a Mac, went over to, yeah. down, took it over there and yes. down, you know, put it loaded the binary on a Mac and yes. showed them how they could read their email. Yeah, and they yeah. were blowing away. Wow. Was, wow. Across everywhere to Stanford, I could yeah. read my email and et cetera yeah. like that. So yeah, they yeah. got it going in there. Yeah. And actually, they had came up with something called Mac TCP. Right. Okay. Well, this was, the guy who was working on it was John Bezade. Yes. Nick Bezade's nephew. And yes. he actually had a summer, he worked for me in 1984 during yeah. the summer when he was yes. getting his computer science degree over at Berkeley. Yes. And he wanted someone to help him do Mac TCP and test yes. it on a very heterogeneous environment. Right, so right. he came to my office and I helped him do Mac TCP yeah. stuff, et cetera. And yeah. this was just all yes. gratis for nothing. Right, right, right. Yeah. Because people need help, right? Yeah. And so I did all of that stuff. And then um, ultimately, Matt, uh, we actually shipped uh, the IMAP stuff that we had yes. to more than 10,000 uh, universities. Wow. Uh, you know, uh, around the world yes. because it's free it's public domain it's yes. nih yes et cetera et cetera yes and uh, we we supported a kind of a mac user groups on our system yes had its own little private directory uh, had its own system to set up there the yes. router would go there because right, right. lots of use yes and uh i don't know when they finally moved the cisco routers maybe oh, there was a <laughs> one funny thing that happened yeah <laughs> and this is such a right 
So this guy, Tom Deansburg, he was the computer facilities manager. And yeah. um, at the time, yeah. we had people isolated over there yeah. in the computer science department. And uh, it came along, and a guy, Bill Yunt, decided to purify the network out there. Yeah. So that only IP would run on it. Okay. okay. It was this purified network. Yeah. And we had people over there, and they needed ChaosNet. Yes. And they needed XNS. Okay. Yes. And we had Margaret Jack's gateway was run down. By, I gave this to Cisco guys, and yes. they purified it. It was run there with Tom. I said, Tom, look, we really got to route this stuff. And I have a special router over here in Pine Hall. Yeah. We could shoot it through there, et cetera. So he, we did a midnight raid and swapped it. Wow. People got pissed off, but he said, hey, this belongs to computer science. We can yeah. do what we want to do. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the irony of this is, yeah. one day I'm sitting in my office and a guy, Chris Schmidt, sits next to me and he says, all of the list machines are going into garbage collection. Yes. Garbage collection. So I sprint over to uh, this machine room and ask what I want. And I look at it and there is a, a router there and I go look at it and it's getting random XNS addresses that are changing second by second. Right. And the rule is when you get a new address, you just broadcast it out. Okay. So where the hell is this coming? Like, it's illegal. Yeah. It doesn't follow the right mass. So I yeah. quickly went to my office, made a little fat. Yeah. Anything that doesn't fit the right mass, there's a mass for the right address that's parked. Yeah. Throw it away. Yes. And then I find out that Bill Young actually had, uh, actually <laughs> had decided to store some XNS stuff over in for the business school okay. or something like that, accounting school. Yeah. And was was putting it on his. In, 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 he was. He no longer had a pure network. More right. Much, right? Okay. <laughs> so that well, then anyway, I talked to a guy, Jim Powell, there, and yeah. I told him what's going on, and yeah. fixed, they, they ultimately fix it. And what caused it is a, the irony is yeah. that whenever I turned on the router in my office, yeah, it would deal with sixteen, two to the fourth. But when the seventh, seventeenth router came on, it yeah, trigger a bug. Oh. Every time I turned the router on my office, it started happening. And I had my own router. Okay. Because I was still managing yeah. things and looking at things and yeah. adding features and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that's that. Okay. I, then I was working on a project called Doctor Network for digital equipment, which was taking the simple network management protocol and doing analysis and not just giving it back numbers, but using things, Bayesian statistics and other kinds of analysis to, to, my, to just really say, well, this is a, there's a problem. Yes. There isn't a problem. And if there, I knew about the topology and yes. if it looked like a router was down or a network was down, I'd try to ping through and if I couldn't, yeah. and I could test interfaces, do all kinds of cool stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And that was going to be a great project. I wrote a nice simulator. I could do it all, simulate networks, do all kinds of, tell it into my, anyway, a lot of cool stuff. And then, <laughs> debt went bankrupt. Oh, really? Shut okay. me out. Yeah. Okay, so I said, okay, I'm shut out of here, and I needed money for a salary. Well, fortunately, I had $180,000 from Cisco Royalties. Oh, I royalty for, for the router. Yeah. yeah, for the router. Yeah. And so I got a salary from that, and yeah. then I got re reintegrated in the group. And yeah. I sort of then became what they called the SWAT team okay. for the... Uh, it was a medical informatics yes. mixing group, and I actually helped... PhD students finished their theses yeah. uh, in medical informatics. Yes. Uh, one was called Ebony Ivory, which right. had to do with uh, you know, pharmaceuticals and taking yeah. input from forms and turning them yeah. into certain things. And yeah. another one was T cell, which yes. had to do with uh, T helper, which had to do with AIDS and remote oh, diagnostics. Right. But yeah. some guy had written like a hundred thousand yeah. lines of prologue. <laughs> yes, and this was dry. And then he is a guy. <laughs> He got stuck in Canada. He couldn't get back into the country, and yeah. it was broken. Yeah. So I had a hundred thousand lines of prologue All right. that I had to learn. Yeah. Well, yeah. the rule is start at line one, right? That's a yeah. lot of lines. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> but I've gone through, and I found out that he was treating the network protocol TCP/IP like a disk. You just okay. write, and it's done. All right. And it's there. You yeah. Know, and you read, and you got it. Yeah. But you need a protocol because right. it may, or you know, packets get retransmitted. You know, so I yeah. put a protocol in there. Yeah. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, and got all of that working and helped T helper and that yeah. was right. But finally, that was done. And, mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was torture because it's prologue is is a gaming lit, nice little toyful thing. But yeah. uh, for a hundred thousand lines, it was a little bit uh, to really write strings <laughs> was a major problem. Yeah, actually. yeah. So I did that, and at the same time, I was consulting for Sun Microsystems. Okay. And they, they wanted some IMAP servers. They were doing a disconnected uh, Solaris. Yeah based uh, laptop. Yeah. 
And uh, so uh, I knew a guy in there, and um, Carl Jacob. Yes. And he uh, somehow found out about me and asked me if I could write to my map server, yeah. disconnected, yeah. and then do a help do a disconnected client. Yeah. I said, sure. How much? And he says, well, I said, that's going to take me a month. Uh, how about 25K? He says, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> we have a fan zone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, and then I got to know Sun. This was yeah. Sun, the new Sun. Yeah. Okay, at least this was, it, was, it was like a university. And so I also noticed that our grant money was getting tougher and tougher. Right, right, yeah. So I said, I think, uh, and I also would get about a th almost 50% increase in salary. And yeah. I added all this up and I yeah. said, and it's a fun environment. So yeah. I went there. Yeah, to some, yeah. And I, on my party, my go away party, I asked Tom, was I the rock of Gibraltar? Yeah, <laughs> yes. And he said, yes. Yes, you were. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And then I went to Sun, and I got a bunch of patents on email yeah. stuff, and invented something called the Sun Intermail, Internet yeah. Mail Server Messaging yeah. Service. They always like to say messaging, but it's yeah. really mail. Right, right. What, you know, yeah. It has a it's a mail. Yeah. And I uh, did that, and then uh, got into uh, after that, I went to work for actually we had this um, guy named Mike Clary started a group doing uh, P P two P stuff. Okay. Peer to peer, and they needed uh, and a guy named uh, Lee Gong was still one of my best friends, yes. and he lives now here in the area. Yes. He's a Chinese guy, but he's an amazing guy. He invented Java security and all that stuff. And yes. he was a direct he was a director, and he made me the CTO. Yeah, and I was in there, and I was again their SWAT team, okay. trying to make it all work. And yeah. I got several patents there wow. on, the, on the work I did there. Yes. When I did. Uh, uh, TLS on an overlay network and yeah. with a good friend of mine, Rita Chen, who's still around, a real buddy. She yes. and her husband live up there. Wow. In, in, uh, very close to here. Yeah. And did some other things and uh, then I went to Sun Labs and I found out when you get into Sun Labs, it's sort of like a mafia. Oh, really? It, it, it's, it's sort of like last in, first out. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a lethal. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and Reed and I went there, and then Sun was really getting into deep troubles and deep straits, and they got a, some new guy came in, and so they said, well, Bill, here's your choice. You can go back to the product groups, yeah. or you can leave. You have your time. And <laughs> decide. And then I talked to Mike Clary, my buddy, yeah. who's the VP, and he says, Sun is not going to be fun any oh. longer. He was right. Oh, really? He was handwriting his leave. Yeah. So oh, I left. You left, yeah. And lo and behold, I also was ahead of Sun's WAP forum okay. team. Okay. Okay. I started this and worked with uh, NDD Docomo. Yeah. And we were, the goal was to get rid of uh, WAP. Okay. And uh, work with this team. And I made friends with Yanko Mirsik Slogo, who's yeah. a good buddy with David Levy. Yes. And, okay. oh. Whom you know. And we became yeah. friends. And, yes. Uh, so when I told Yanko this, he said, write a 15 page proposal. Mm hmm. And I'll see what we can do because he worked for BBC and yeah. they had a something called Vector, which was a venture group. Yes. And they accepted it, and it was with Nokia to do something like what they call the iPlayer. Okay. And this I did invent a sort of an in, an interoperable called inverted peer-to-peer -peer network where right. the data all stayed outside yeah. and you could share at night and do all kinds of stuff. It was an amazing thing. It, yeah. was, it did instance communities, et cetera, et cetera. It was wow. sort of like Facebook. Yeah. Wow. Except better, I think, <laughs> because. It, I, we limited the size of communities, first yes. of all. Of all communities. Yes, and you yes. could, I, I could run it here. You turn on a community in yeah. one minute. You can invent yeah. a community. There it is. Good. Yeah. You can yeah. get it, and you invite people to join. They right. get invitations. They come back and join right. everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Sharing all. Anyway, it was cool. And so we went on to that, and that was 2004, and we went on. And, and about the end of 2004, we had a nice visit to Nokia in, in Finland. Yes. Helsinki. Wonderful visit. Great people. Did a presentation, went before the board, and yeah. the board accepted it, and it yeah. was going to be 120 million over three years. Wow. But Timo Temelin, who was the VP of Vecta, yes. decided to leave. Oh. And I was sitting in <laughs> Kite Park watching some kids play tennis yeah. with Yanko and Joan. Yeah. And he got a phone call. Sorry, oh. the new VP will not fund this kind of stuff anymore. His oh. face went white. Oh my goodness. And I said, Well, I worked at Sun. This is a reorg. <laughs> You got to get used to it. So yeah. then the BBC actually tried to get us to go out and do, you know, do a startup in the Bay Area. Yeah. But they wanted it. He wanted it in the Bay Area and in the UK. Yeah. We got about nine million, and the VC wanted another three, and yeah. it was getting very complicated. Yeah. And then body, 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 bah. Yeah. And so I had it. Yeah. All right. 
this have you already done the work with Docomo in Japan at this stage? Oh, that was done yeah. That oh, was okay. done uh, a few years ago. That okay. I finished that Docomo stuff in uh, between uh, 99 Okay. 99 2000 yeah. we ran the wet form and what happened is the end is about 2002 or so yeah 2001 maybe the IETF what we did I went to Hong Kong yeah and we had a demo on a guy named Bipo Gupta yeah. Bipo Gupta in yeah. Sun Labs okay claimed he said look you don't need web servers you yeah. can go end to end TCP yeah. IP and the security is stronger than 40 bit Right. keys in you know, yeah, those days yeah. of 128 right yes. etc etc and we were in hong kong and he yeah. did a demo yeah with a palm pilot yeah. he connected through the sun's vpn went right. in read his email right right and, and everybody was turned on to this yeah ultimately the iatf had a meeting in santa clara yeah. with wap and they decided to go tcp ip and okay. then wap would go away okay and i saw that i knew that was gone anyway yeah. they had something called the wap gap okay decrypt yeah. on the WAP server, re-encrypt, yeah. and now it's called the WAP gap, okay. and like Scott Manili said, I would never let my stuff run through that, <laughs> yeah, because yeah, yeah. you can't trust the operators yeah. right, for right. those computers, IT, yeah, yeah. and AT&T and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So, and, you, for Docomo, you were writing this, the WAP, or the news? I, I was, what I did, I did one thing, I mm -hmm. invented one thing, and that was proxy IMAP email that would proxy out what was called a handheld device markup language, HTML. Okay. It would do WML and it would do HTML. Okay. So I could lay in bed here and run my Palm Pilot, read right. my email on the little browser they yeah. had and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And that ultimately became the iPlanet wireless services, a one person job. Okay. There was a girl, Jenny Chang, yeah. and she actually had to write the interface to add new users, a web page for okay. that kind of thingy. And uh, that went on at SFR Shijitel, uh that became their, their stuff. And they paid my salary for a year, flew Joan and I to France many times. Yeah. Treated us beautifully. Wow. Still have friends uh, yeah. from that place. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that became the iMode system in huh? Japan? Did that lead on to the iMode? Well, I, Japan was already doing iMode. Okay, okay. That was their thing. All right. So you were doing yeah. the email part. And yeah. I, but I made very good friends with a couple of VPs over there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'll close with one funny story. Yeah. Okay. So we're in Australia uh, and we're uh, in Sydney and we're at the uh, web forum and yeah. the Japanese host the Sun team, totally there 10 of us together. Yeah. We go out to the rocks. Yes. There's a place called Bellamondo. Right. A beautiful Italian restaurant. Yes. And we're sitting down at the table <laughs> and the guy says, uh, well, here we are, we're gonna have a nice dinner and we have limiting to $200 for the wine. And I said, yeah. totally said no, for a bottle. Right. <laughs> well, okay. you know, you see my wine cellar, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't drink a lot, but we drink high on the food. Yeah, yeah. And so I said, okay. So we had a $2,200 dinner essentially wow. when we came to. Yeah. Then the next lap for a meeting was in London. Yeah. And through the back, and I had actually changed groups and I was in a different group at this time. I said, it was, it was just, you know, the, uh, well, there was another group I was in for a short stay, and yeah. it was still Mark Clare, Mike Clary, right? Yeah. Anyway, so uh, and and I got word that we were going to take them to a, a, a French restaurant, and we were going to pay for the meal. Okay, <laughs> this was you know okay, but you know, and it yeah. comes up, and and so we go and we have this beautiful dinner, and yeah. the wine and all cost two thousand two hundred dollars, yeah. wow. and and he comes to Japanese guys, he had said. Uh, Okay, uh, I'm going to pay. I said, no, you don't have to. And he said, because I, you know, because I, <laughs> God, I can't speak. Arigat <laughs> gozaimasu. Uh, I said, don't touch my shirt. Yeah, yeah. We got all this nice stuff and we pay. Yeah, yeah. So then I go back and Mike Clary says, what is this $12,000 traveling? I said, well, there's hotel. Yeah. They always let us travel uh, first class yeah. because, or business class, because if you travel more than six and yeah. all that stuff, and then there's this $2,200 meal. I said, yeah. yes, and I explained it to him. Yes, yes, yes. He says, well, that's the last one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that sort of gives you a little, yeah. a brief summary of how it all went. Fantastic. But I just went, I always went after the thing that I really had a good time doing. Yeah, yeah. And I still, actually, to be honest, I like math better than Computing, yeah. if you want to see what I'm reading right yeah. now, yeah. it's Introduction to Topology, <laughs> Topology and Modern Analysis, yes. which I enjoy reading these old graduate school books, yeah. and I read them and think about them as part of, besides learning Chinese, as part of what I yeah. like to do. Yeah. 
Just a couple of quick questions. Um, does does Docomo still use your iMac? Like no, no, no. Talk about it. Talk about their their own thing. Okay. Software wise. Yeah. But uh, we work with the team. Yeah. To get actually, where Microsoft is very cooperative cooperative too to migrate yeah. away from WAP servers okay. and do end-to-end -end TCP IP that was okay. cool because you could do it and you don't need that and then you would get much more acceptance because yeah. you didn't have the WAP gap. Yeah, yeah. So you were doing that. And I'm, I, worked, I'm that part I, of that. I, I worked through with the great Papadopoulos yeah. and also whatever is it, a good friend of mine whose name yeah. escapes me right now and the, who who ran the Sun Standards, Carl yeah. Cargill. Right. I ran this team. I had four really, really powerful people yes. okay, with me. Because yes. the first meeting I went to was in London. Right. And we were sitting there and there was a woman from Alcatel, okay. French. And she says, well, since Sun is not here, yeah. we're going to make these decisions about Java. And I said, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> and away we went. Because my job was also to get the mobile information device profile, profile which we let, had in those times, they had applets yes. to run little programs and that's what I mode yes. use into 3GPP yes into, and into WAP because yes. those are the, the, the standard bodies for it and okay. we all I also succeeded at getting that done yes. there's some pretty serious battles with yes. IBM and uh, who was it I guess yes. Hewlett Packard yes they were, had their own versions of Java and when, the, when it got accepted to actually to WAP yes. they, they abstained it didn't show up Okay, really, yeah. And they said, yes, we do accept Java into this, you know, the mid-piece profile, because right. I was working in that group, too. Yes. And into 3G, and it got into 3GPP, and that was, that's the big, you know. Yeah. They, they run standards for this yes. stuff. So, um, when you're working with Docomo, did you spend some time in Japan? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And, yeah, I did. And what was your main role when you're in Japan? What did you, did you do when you're in Japan? Man. Well, mostly I went and gave talks on Java. Okay, okay, right. I went to, uh, most actually, I didn't visit Docomo yeah. when I went to Japan. Yeah. I I worked with the IETF because I was trying to get peer-to-peer uh, -peer yeah. into the IETF as standards. Okay. Okay. For the IMAP or? No, no, no. IMAP, this is just totally, this, we, we um, did, this was Juxta, Project Juxta. Yeah. IMAP was spreading through the IETF. Okay, okay, sure, sure. There was Project Juxta where I worked, yeah. and we wanted to make it a standard. Right, right. Because you know, all these patents they have, we, we made a public domain and yeah. all this stuff to do this. Right. And so I went to the IET, I went to one Java meeting and right. gave a talk on Java. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then I went to Yokohama yeah. IETF yeah. and gave it and, and worked with this group to get the standards. So okay. these are other battles. Right, Ultimately, right. what happened is I started an internet uh, I research task force okay. group. I, yeah, I T R F. Yeah, yeah, R I R T F. I started yes, R I T F, yeah. and I was for two years. I was the person chairperson. For okay, me. and then we went around all over to these meetings to try to get it going. But after that, I got tired of it too. Okay, so through that, you were trying to work with Docomo to get your standard yeah, accepted. The, 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 all we wanted to do with Docomo because they were using mid P. Yeah, was get that in there. Okay, because okay. that's what they use in this IMO thing for because right. you could download applets. Yes, yes, yes. These little job applications right, and right. run them, and of course, oh, we also saw the iPhone coming down the, the tracks. Yes. This is very important to understand. I visited yes. Samsung, and they had flash memory, and no yes. one else did. It was like yes. sixteen megabytes. Right. I said, "Uh oh, this is hardware. It's going to be gigabytes. That's yes. how it works. Right, Five right. years from now, it's all engineering. The yeah. engineers will do it, yes. and this is all going to go away." Yes. And that was one of the bitches about my thing called Pirouette the company. Right. It's everybody. I said, we don't want to do it on the web. We just want to do it in smartphones. And Nokia had smartphones and we had the Nokia thing because these are going to be the major device in another yeah. two or three years. Yes. We knew it. Yes. Ah, uh, the VCs went money faster. Yeah. So what was the last uh, project you did before you retired? My what? Last project you did before you retired. Yeah. Oh, actually it was this pirouette thing. Okay. okay. And then yeah. uh, I still have this stuff there. It was cool. Yeah. And it was a nice pro. I wrote all of the back end stuff. Yeah. And Rita, who's a buddy, she worked on the clients and yeah. Yeah, all kind of fun features. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. It was fantastic and yeah. such an amazing life you've had and many amazing inventions. Uh, I wonder if you have any advice to the students uh, at uh, our university in Tokyo uh, about pursuing their passions or career. Well, I would say that, you know, follow what you really enjoy doing. 
and don't do it because it's going to be a good job and make more money. Now, I know in Japan, I have many friends in Japan, yeah. <laughs> okay. and that's part of the deal. But yeah. if you do something you enjoy, often the path is unexpected. Yes. But it's a wonderful adventure, yes. and it's always fun. Yes. And, uh, you, you know, you have to be patient. And I went through several jobs before yeah. I settled into Stanford, yeah. and I, my path took me there, and yeah. that was the right place. Yes. If the grants would have continued, I would have never left, yes. because uh, it was has so many advantages, yeah. especially for someone who likes yeah. tennis. Wow. And I by, I, by the way, I still play tennis over there with the head coach. Oh, really? The <laughs> tennis team, occasionally with one of the girls. And do all right for my age. Yeah, More that's great. Right, that's sure. great. Well, yeah, it's an amazing, amazing career you've had and uh, amazing inventions. You've changed the world, I, I uh, yeah, definitely think. And you know what? I never set out to change the world. Yeah, yeah. But you did, yeah, which is yeah, amazing. But you yeah. do it because what yeah. you do is yeah. happens. I found another rule. Yeah. Whenever you're in a job and they offer something that no one else wants to do because it seems so difficult and new, do it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because you're going to continue to learn. Yeah. Just, if, just, there are people who like to maintain. If you like yeah. to maintain, well, yeah, you will maintain. But if you like to do adventures, go for them. Yeah, that's fantastic advice. Yeah, yeah. it's more fun. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, uh, a video interview with uh, Mr. William Yeager. Uh, I think you agree, he's a, had an amazing career, amazing inventions, and really changed our world and changed all the people's lives. Uh, all these technologies we have now really are based on these uh, amazing inventions. So thank you very much, William. Thank you. Thank you. Sure, sure. Thank you. Very happy to. Thank you. Good. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Okay. Um, thank you.